unafraid The plans that we made Walking in a winter wonderland Coastal Church. I'm Joe, campus pastor from Gulf Shores campus. And I'm Steve, uh, campus pastor at the Bay Manette campus. See you guys. So Joe, uh, how was your drive in from Gulf Shores through all the three inches of snow when it was 78 degrees and I left Bay Manette? You know, it was rough and I'm glad I left a little early because I happened to just step on a pop top, blew out my flip flop, had to cruise on back home get some real shoes on wow wow i was really kind of surprised that uh pastor aaron didn't ask me to sing how about you you know he didn't ask me either and I, i've got to be honest i overheard them talking they've heard us before we didn't make the cut <laughs> well we better just stick to uh giving the people information then we can do that hey guys when you came in this afternoon there's a connect card already on the seat if you're a first-time guest or you would just like to learn more about coastal church if you'd fill that out, and on your way out, just dropping in a giving box, we'll get connected with you. Also want you to know, uh, when you leave tonight in the foyer, there is a gift box for everyone here, for every family, and it's got a communion set in there. And in that, tomorrow at Christmas time, you can log on to social media or the church website and hear a teaching from Pastor Chad on communion and have that with your family. And you know, guys, a lot of people came today ready to do some end-of-the-year giving as we're wrapping up 2016. And we just like to let you know that on your way out, you can also drop tithes, offerings, gifts into the giving boxes. And you know, as we think about today, the atmosphere of Christmas, how it's all about giving, what a great atmosphere to give our very best gift as we celebrate Jesus and God giving His best gift for us. Also want you to know, coming up in January is the new series called Momentum. Really excited to see what God's going to do in our lives and take us to the next level of what He wants to do in blessing us and see our lives become more productive for us and for His glory. All right, guys, that's all from us. Enjoy the sound of Christmas.
those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that the census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Cornarius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he was of the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And the shepherds living out in the fields nearby kept watch over their flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel of the Lord said to them, do not be afraid, I bring you good news that will be of great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Messiah, the Lord. The sign shall be to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to all those who find favor with him. And the angels had left them and gone into heaven. The shepherds said one to another, let's go to Bethlehem and see what this thing is that's happened, which the Lord has told us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread word concerning what was told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had seen and heard, which had been told to them. And that is the Christmas story.
The stars are burning bright. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long may the world in sin and deep so wide till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. Rejoice, rejoice. And in his name, all oppression shall cease. Rejoice, rejoice. Jesus the Christ. We have been told stories of old. God came as a child to change the destiny of all men, to show forgiveness to sinners. To believe such things is misguided. The truth is, he was just an ordinary man who lived an ordinary life. Those who do not believe the truth say, We proclaim his name, Emmanuel, God with us. We share the wonder of the shepherds. We sing the songs of the angels. This is not what is real. Shepherds were not awakened by angelic announcement. There were no wise men celebrating the birth of the king. I'd be lying to you if I said that for the creator of the universe, there was no room in the inn. For the son of God, there was but a humble stable. Whether you like it or not, this is the reality of Christmas. That's what I used to think. But then I made room for him in my heart, and Jesus turned it all upside down. This is the reality of Christmas, whether you like it or not. There was but a humble stable for the Son of God. 
There was no room in the inn for the creator of the universe. I'd be lying to you if I said that there were no wise men celebrating the birth of the king, that shepherds were not awakened by angelic announcement. This is not what is real. We sing the song of the angels. We share the wonder of the shepherds. We proclaim his name, Emmanuel, God with us. Those who do not believe the truth say he was just an ordinary man who lived an ordinary life, but to believe such things is misguided. The truth is, to show forgiveness to sinners, to change the destiny of all men, God came as a child. We've been told stories of old. We remember the birth of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for being here tonight. What about this talent on the stage right now? Are y'all just... Man, I feel like a wiener in a steakhouse, you know? Uh, it has been so cool to, uh, to watch every, uh, all week long these guys practice and, and how they wanted to serve you. And, man, we're just so thrilled to have you uh, tonight. Uh, and I wanted to, uh, to give just a few moments uh, of instruction uh, of, about tomorrow. Uh, we won't be hosting services here uh, tomorrow. The Holy Spirit will be here. However, we will not. Uh, but uh, here's what, uh, we'll, uh, what we're planning on doing that we think is going to be awesome for you. Um, we are going to be putting on social media, on our website, each and every one of you. If you will also um, uh, write on your Connect card, give us your information. We'll also get in on a personal email that you can forward if you like. And just for a few moments, we want to do some... Uh, uh, be able to give communion to you virtually at whatever time you want to do it. If, you're, if your family likes to eat a big old dinner and sleep in on Christmas morning, I think you may be a communist if you do that, but uh, you know, as opposed to waking up at 5 o'clock and being exhausted by 9.30. Uh, but uh, we wanted to be able to serve you, and so I want to encourage you to, uh, to take those communion uh, elements uh, out there. That, that, that's free for, uh, for all of you. And um, tonight I wanted to just spend a few moments with you we, we had desired to do something uh, this year where we could be able to come and encourage people for a little while uh, on Christmas Eve, do it under an hour, and, uh, and just uh, let our community know, man, that, that we love you and we're honored to be able to serve you. Um, I don't know what uh, 2016 was like for you. Uh, some of us, uh, it, this was an incredible year, and some of you may be here tonight and say, if, if 2017 is going to be a repeat of 2016, I am going to be able to begin drinking at 5 o'clock and not draw a sober breath until 8 o'clock the next morning, all right? Uh, it's just been really stressful, and many of us don't know how to, uh, how to embrace this season right now. For some of us, it's been pretty intense. Maybe you're here tonight in... This is the first Christmas without a loved one. Maybe you're here and you would say, or you're watching online and you'd say, you know what, this is the first Christmas of the divorce. And I feel more alone and I feel more um, disattached uh, than ever before. The Bible says that we are to bear one another's burdens. And during this Christmas season, we just wanted to be able to come in and offer uh, some hope and also be able to offer maybe a different thought right now. You know, the, the thing that's so cool about Christmas, only, only Jesus would be so considerate as to, it's his birthday, but we get all the gifts. Have you ever thought about that? And uh, that, that's who he is. And, uh, and whenever, whenever Jesus came to the planet, you know what? It was basically God giving a gift to us and saying, you know what? You don't understand what's happening right now, but you're just going to have to trust me. And ladies and gentlemen, when Jesus comes on the scene, before he ever even begins his, his ministry, John the Baptist yells out something. As soon as they see him, he said, behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the earth. You know what? Some people think, oh man, isn't that beautiful? What he is actually doing there, ladies and gentlemen, he's pronouncing a death sentence upon this man. He's saying, here's the guy that's going to take all of your issues, all of your junk, all of your questions, all of your frustrations, and he's going to pay the price for you. That's exactly what he did. And tonight, as we are, as we're here and we're about to go into 
to a time where a prayer and a time for believing God for some miracles for you. What I want to make sure that everybody knows is that there is a God who's come on the scene over 2,000 years ago to take exactly where you are exactly right now and to be a gift to you. Tonight, at our last service, we're going to be able to, to do something that's been about four years in the making. Some of you would say, man, I need God to do a miracle for me just to, just to let me know that, that he's still here, that he still cares. And about four years ago, we were here, we were brand new in our building. We had just moved over from the school and we were like, man, we're legit now. We've got a, uh, we've got a church and everything. And, and, but the only problem was we didn't have enough talent to be able to put on a nice Christmas Eve thing. So we just told everybody where good Christmas Eve services were going on. And, uh, and so I did what uh, it's kind of, kind of natural in my family is that, um, man, I began to barbecue. And I had a brisket on the smoker, man. And I was up here, and one of my buddies came in from New Orleans, and we were sitting there. Uh, we were just talking the whole day, and I, and I spent the day cooking. And I, and I looked down because whenever, whenever my wife doesn't like me handling my phone, whenever I'm handling like raw meat and everything. Uh, by the way, you could you could die doing something like that. And so I had it uh, away from me, and I came in, and I was looking, and there's like five or six missed calls, and I, looked, I said, man, what could be going on with that? And so, uh, whenever I was all, uh, I had my hands all clean and everything, I, I said, okay, uh, what, what's going on? And there were message after message that said, Chad, this, this, is, this is the worst night ever. I just need you to call me. I can't go into detail. And I was, okay. And it was, it was from this one particular family. Um, it was Christmas Eve, and they were celebrating their grandmother's birthday along with, you know, the, uh, the Christmas day to come. And um, they were celebrating as a family. And this little girl, she was, she was just about to turn three. She was celebrating. Everybody's outside playing. It's a nice day like today, 78 degrees on Christmas Eve. And as everybody was playing, that little girl, she's, she's celebrating. She's around her family. And as she's walking by the playground, all of a sudden, a swing set comes out of the ground, falls on her, instantly kills her. And I, I arrived at the hospital. I mean, I still had, I still had smelled like smoke. I had, you know, the, my, my shirt was all torn up from the day, but we immediately went there. And, you know, family, you know, when you're hurting, people don't care what you smell like. And, man, they were there, and they said, Chad, we need a miracle. We need a miracle. And... We continue to pray. We continue to call people. And a little bit after midnight that night, uh, little Henry uh, Grote passed away. Can I tell you, that was a Christmas I'm never going to forget. Because we were there and we saw um, a family just absolutely wrecked. Where they're like, Chad, of all the time, why today? Why? And... And as I began to counsel that family and love on that family and, and our church, man, they rallied together that, uh, that following week and we, we threw a, a, a celebration of life here. But this family was wrecked. And I remember talking to the mother and I said, I don't have any answers for you. This stinks and it's always going to stink. But somehow, some way, Let's believe for God to get something out of this. These were dedicated Christ followers. I said, I want to encourage you to get involved in some, some good counseling right now because men and women grieve differently, and they've done that. And you know what? The mom started a blog. She's reached over hundreds of thousands of people telling the story about how in the middle of heartbreak that God is a good God. And people have given their life to Jesus through this. And ladies and gentlemen, you know what they called and asked just a couple of couple of months ago? They said, Chad, we're going to be in town on Christmas Eve. And, you know, it's kind of always a hard day. 
but we're going to redeem Christmas Eve. I want, I want uh, on Christmas Eve to come back to Coastal Church, and I want you to dedicate our two new children on Christmas Eve. And so we're going to be able to be, uh, be able to do this. And in somehow, some way, yes, it was the, it was a ripping, it was a breaking of, uh, of, uh, of their hearts and our hearts too. It hurt our whole community. But you know what? Because of the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ, these folks now come together saying, in the midst of heartbreak, our God is a good God. And our God still has the final story in their life and in ours too. And so, with every head bowed and every eye closed, tonight, if you're a Christ follower, and you say, Chad, I need a miracle. I need, you, you may be in a horrible work environment or, or, or going into an incredibly dysfunctional situation over this Christmas holidays. And, and you'd say, Chad, I, I need God's strength. I need God's wisdom. I need God's hand upon me. Maybe you're facing some addiction right now where you're like, man, it's really, really out of control. And I need the strength in the peace and the love of God like never before. We are a church family that believes in miracles. And if that's you tonight, you say, Chad, I need a miracle over this holiday season. Would you pray for me? Would you just lift up your hand real quick? All we want to do is pray for you. There are hands that are going up all over this building right now. Father, you see my brothers and sisters and you see exactly where they are. And Father, you love us in spite of everything that we're dealing with right now. You are a great and mighty God. I ask you to, in the next several days, even in the next minutes and hours, reveal yourself to my brothers and sisters. Lord, bring in your strength, your peace, your understanding, like only you can do. And we'll be quick to give you the praise, honor, and glory for it. In Jesus' name, with every head still bowed, every eye still closed. Maybe you're here tonight. And you've never begun your spiritual journey. Maybe you one time served God, but you've drifted and fallen away. And in some uh, over these last 45 minutes, the Spirit of God has been speaking to you. He's saying, I want a relationship with you. Some of you have been like, man, I, I once served God, and man, I just totally turned my back on God. The Spirit of God is drawing you in. You've not come too far. You've not done too much that the Spirit of God will not chase you and love you exactly where you are. If you're here tonight, you say, Chad, I'm not right with God. I want to let you know something. I won't bring you forward. I won't do anything to embarrass you. This is, a, this is something between you and God. But if you're here tonight, you say, Chad, I'm not right with God. And I need to get right with God. Chad, would you pray for me? Would you just lift up your hand real quick? Chad, pray for me. I'm not right with God. There are those of you in here with your hands raised right now. Those of you watching online. Chad, pray for me. I'm not right with God. Those of you with your hands raised, we are all going to pray this prayer together as a church family. You're part of the family of God now. And you're going to be assured for heaven as if you were already there. Pray this prayer out loud with me, church. Dear Lord Jesus, you know I'm a sinner. And I know I'm a sinner. And I've committed sins. But tonight, Lord Jesus, I give you those sins. I ask you to come into my heart. Wash me clean. And I'll live for you as you show me how. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, church. Let's give it up for all those that gave their life to Jesus today. Now, would you stand to your feet with me? Now, just in case you didn't, didn't know, this, this church, um, we believe in worshiping all throughout the, uh, the service. Some of us, we just couldn't contain ourselves in some of the songs. So we had to stand up and we were like, you know what? We have, we've come to, to listen, but I want to let you know something here at Coastal Church. We believe that you can actually participate in the service. All right? <laughs> Good Lord. Y'all got a little work on y'all. Y'all need to go to Amen School in the next week. All right? <laughs> listen to me. We have got so much to celebrate. All right? And so we decided the best way that we were going to conclude this service, let me tell you what God has done this year at, at our church. In one year, our church has grown almost 1,000 people. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we've seen over 2,400 people give their life to Jesus. Crazy good. We have, we have expanded from one campus to four. We have, uh, we have got so many. By the way, uh, not only has God expanded our reach uh, as a church, but now we have a fully functioning, fully funded food bank in Bay Manette where we can extend beyond this. On January the 15th, Coastal Church Park is opening up and we're going to continue to be a lighthouse to the nation. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are a part of Coastal Church and God has been good to you, come on, let's give God a warm round of applause and let's go out this year singing, thanking God. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, put your hands together. Come on. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. 